This is KP Wee with This Week in BC Minor League Sports here on CJSF 90.1 FM. You can also find us online at www.cjsf.ca and on TELUS HD channel 7014. We're broadcasting from Simon Fraser University in Burnaby, British Columbia. Now, During this program today, we'll recap the first month of action from the BC Major Midget Hockey League, which began in late September. Now, obviously, in other sports news, the uh, Major League Baseball playoffs have been pretty exciting, and I've been following um, uh, the action there as well. Uh, the NHL season has started. There's also the NFL and NBA to talk about, but unfortunately, this is not the show for uh, that. Um, we don't cover professional sports leagues in this program. Instead, this is a show about amateur and minor minor league sports such as midget hockey or amateur baseball as well as collegiate sports so i'm going to give my opinions about pro sports at the pub with my buddies instead and besides if you're looking for um, news and updates about uh, the professional sports leagues you wouldn't be listening here at this on this station uh, to me talking about it so um again that we're just going to be covering um minor league sports or amateur sports and uh, we're going to spend um, this program today talking about the first month of action from the British Columbia Major Midget Hockey League. Now uh, this league is um, uh, for players who are between the ages of 15 to 17 and uh, there are 11 teams in the BC Major Midget Hockey League. And uh, the teams are uh, from the Lower Mainland as well as um, Victoria and the Interior. Uh, so lots of uh, talented young players who are going to school as well as playing hockey during the weekend as they try to uh, impress scouts. And uh, hopefully, you know, they, their goal, of course, is to make it to the pros uh, at some point in their future. And so it's... Uh, um, so it's a good uh, it's a good league, the uh, BC Major Midget Hockey League, to uh, to to get the coaching and the training that uh, that they get from the uh, top notch coaches in the league, and uh, they try to advance and improve their game, and uh, hopefully move on to uh, uh, higher levels of junior hockey, and then who knows what's going to happen after that. Um, now all the games are free to attend if you are in you know if you're in the area. Uh, for instance, in the Lower Mainland, uh, there are games happening at Coquitlam in the Planet Ice Rink, and in Richmond as well at the Richmond Oval, and also in Burnaby at the Burnaby Winter Club. And uh, so there are teams playing uh, in those particular venues. There's also the Langley Event Center in Langley as well, uh, where one of the teams play. That would be the Valley West Hawks. So lots of uh, exciting uh, midget hockey games to check out on the weekend if you are interested in uh, you know, amateur sports or um, you know watching um, exciting hockey action. Uh, so we're gonna, actually going to get started now with um, the recaps of uh, some of the games from uh, the first month of the season. The Okanagan Rockets are the defending BC Major Midget League champions, and they have only one player returning from last year's club uh, because of the majority of the boys have moved on to junior hockey and other leagues. So it's quite a different team this year for the defending champions. And even their head coach has moved on as uh, Mac O'Rourke, uh, who guided the team last year behind a bench. Uh, he's moved on to a non-hockey related industry and the team has now hired Simon Ferguson to lead the club. Um, the Rockets actually opened their season on September 20th at home against the Vancouver Northeast Chiefs, which is a club from Coquitlam. The Rockets won 5-3 to three on Saturday night on the 20th and then beat uh, Vancouver Northeast again 3-1 to one the following afternoon. So the Okanagan Rockets, even with almost all new players, were still back to their winning ways. Uh, they had a bye week the following weekend and I had a chance to catch up with their general manager, David Michaud, in Richmond as he was checking out um, the league's showcase weekend on September the 27th. We're with David Michaud, the general manager of the champion Okanagan Rockets. So, a uh, perfect 2 0 start to the season for you guys. What are your thoughts about that? Well, it was a good weekend for us to get started, KP. Uh, obviously, we had a lot of new faces in the lineup this year, and not quite the same team we had last year, a new coaching staff. And so, we put in a lot of work this summer and through, uh, through evaluation camp and training camp, and uh, just happy to get rewarded with some early results. And, I know from a confidence standpoint, it, uh, it's certainly going to help our group as we get into the season here. 
Now, David, you guys are off this weekend, but you're here at the Richmond Oval. Um, what, what's what's going on? What are you what are you doing here? <laughs> well, we're just checking out the other teams in the MML this year. Obviously, see what we're up against, and we have a big test coming up next weekend in our historical rival, the Giants, I guess, coming up to Kelowna. So, opportunity to come down here, KP, and see uh, see what the league has to offer this year. Awesome. And um, now, going back to your team, uh, David. Uh, you mentioned a lot of new faces, so who's returning from last year? Well, we have only one returning face from last year, KP. It's uh, Mark Craven on defense, who uh, we instantly made our captain this year, and we're thrilled to be able to get Mark back. He had a long look with the Victoria Grizzlies in the BCHL and ultimately uh, was sent back to us for one more year, so we're thrilled to have him. And uh, he's really going to help sort of stabilize our defense and obviously being a part of what we were able to accomplish last year, uh, you know, will be very good for the players in the room to, to sort of help guide them through the process. Once again, it's great catching up with you, David. Uh, good luck next weekend against the Giants. Great. Thanks, KP. So September 27th and 28th were the um, showcase weekend in the league with 10 of the 11 teams in action at the Richmond Oval over two days. And as mentioned, the Okanagan Rockets had a bye week at that time. And uh, there were a lot of scouts um, in attendance to check out uh, all of the, the teams that were playing. And just a good event uh, that weekend for the BC Major Midget League. Uh, again, they, they're actually not having an all-star game this year like uh, last year. Um, what they're doing this year instead is they're having two showcase weekends, um, both happening at the Richmond Oval. And uh, the first one, again, happened on September 27th and 28th, and there's another one coming up in February. So a couple of um, uh, showcase weekends, so to speak, for, you know, for the league, uh, for the players to get exposure with the scouts in attendance to uh, check out their play. Um, the Vancouver Northwest Giants, meanwhile, were the regular season champions last year, and they lost to Okanagan in the finals. They're off to another great start this year, and they knocked off the North Island Silver Tips 5-2 to and 3 nothing on opening week. I caught up with Giants assistant coach Calvin Check prior to their game at the Richmond Oval in week number two. We're with Calvin Check, an assistant coach with the Vancouver Northwest Giants, uh, so, Calvin, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're here at the Richmond Oval for the Showcase Weekend. Uh, your thoughts about um, the, this, uh, f- the festivities here? Yeah, well, um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for Junior A and uh, Dub Scouts and uh, College Scouts in the States to come and get all the teams in, in one place at one time. Um, it, uh, obviously, the, the points count toward our standings. We play the same thing as a uh, normal weekend. We've got the Royals. We're technically the home team. Um, but yeah, it's a great opportunity for the league to showcase itself uh, to those leagues. That's where all our kids are trying to get to. Um, and it's uh, really beneficial to those players. And uh, Calvin, you guys are off to a 2 0 start. Uh, what are your thoughts about um, last weekend? Yeah, well, we, yeah, so we, we, we took four points from uh, North Island uh, in their rink, and um, they, were, they were tough games. Uh, the first game, we, we got up early, but, you know, that's a, they're young. They're, their team's mostly 99s, um, and we had a lot of trouble early on with their speed, and once we calmed down and we figured out our positioning in our neutral zone, um, our goaltender the first day, uh, Beck Warm, you know, he played really solid when we needed him to while we figured things out. And then Sunday, I thought we really, we really took it to them. We played exactly how we wanted to play on Sunday, and uh, David Tendek was solid again when we needed him to be. Um, so we improved as the weekend went along, and we feel pretty confident right now with the start that we've had. So once again, a perfect two and zero start for the Giants. You guys are playing the Royals uh, this weekend, so good luck this weekend against South Island. Thanks very much. The Giants went on to defeat the South Island Royals 6-1 and 3-2 on that weekend to improve to 4-0 and after two weeks. And as Calvin Check indicated in the audio, uh, both goaltenders back Warm and David Tendak were outstanding in net for the Rockets, uh, sorry, for the Giants, I should say, on opening weekend. Um, Calvin Check, uh, the assistant coach of the Giants, also mentioned about um, uh, uh, one of their te- the teams having a lot of 99s. He was referring to the fact that um, that the team that they faced um, had a lot of players born in 1999, so they're 15-year-olds, uh, younger players. So obviously, um, uh, probably they had more stamina and uh, more uh, energy you know, toward the end of the game. Uh, but... Um, 
so, some, sometimes when you talk to these coaches, they're gonna throw out these numbers at you or throw out these uh, these buzzwords at you. Them, uh, for example, as you just heard, there uh, a team having a bunch of ninety nines. You know that's what they're talking about having a lot of players uh, who are fifteen years old and born in nineteen ninety nine. So that's what he was referring to. And uh, now as for that matchup between Okanagan and the Giants in week number three, the one that uh, Rockets GM David Misha was referring to earlier, the Giants actually won four to one and three to one to stun the Rockets at their own home rink, the Capital News Center in Kelowna. I, I don't think um, the Rockets lost a game last season at home. So um, two losses to the Northwest Giants, um, you know, just to kind of start off the first couple of weeks of the season. Uh, so definitely not what the Rockets were looking for, but uh, full credit to the Vancouver Northwest Giants as they came out and uh, won those two games. And actually here's some soundbite from the Northwest Giants TV as their broadcast team chatted with a few players following the three to one victory that completed the sweep of the Rockets. Is your first taste of an Okanagan Northwest Giant rivalry. How'd it go for you personally here in game number two? Oh, uh, it went really well I think. Uh, all the boys were there to help us get the W and uh, I don't know, it's nice to get a feel of the rivalry and get ready for our next game against them. You, you particularly made some key saves in that third period, especially on that five on three, a long five on three to be exact. What was it about you just see, being able to see the puck tonight and uh, pretty much stop everything that came your way? Yeah, the boys are really good about clearing the traffic in front and letting me see the puck. And on the five on three, they blocked so many shots for me there. Uh, I only had to save probably three or four on that five on three. Now, you, you, you came in, into this game off a huge win yesterday. There's sometimes that let down with some teams going into a second game. What was it about you guys to start? It looked a little scrambly to start, but once things got going, you guys were able to pick things up and uh, continue the win. Yeah, after the bat, they're going really hard. So we just kind of brought it back to them. And we just have such a good third period every game. So we were able to get the get the win in the end. Well, you guys are 6-0. and yeah. You going to keep on continuing this next week? Yeah, definitely. That was back warm. The uh, one of the goaltenders of the Oak, of the uh, Vancouver Northwest Giants uh, speaking with uh, the the uh, reporter uh, covering the uh, the Giants on Giants TV. Now here is another interview that they put together uh, after the three one win over Okanagan um, that propelled them to a six and zero start to the season. This is Carter Stevenson. It's defenseman Carter Stevenson after a huge weekend here in the Okanagan. Carter, just talk us through this weekend for you personally, being a part of this Rockets Giants rivalry. How'd it go for you? Well, first game, pretty nervous, but then got in the nerves LA probably second period, and then from there on through the weekend, just played a bit better, got involved in the rushes and stuff. With a huge win yesterday, 4 1, there's sometimes downfall with teams going into game two, but you guys pretty much picked up from where you left off yesterday. What was it about today that you guys just made sure that you wanted to come out hard? Uh, today we started a little bit scrambly, but then kind of got to our game plan. We got pucks deep, and we started battling in the corners, and I don't think we lost too many battles today. That was the big difference. You guys faced a lot of adversity in that third period with a 5 on 3 for 2 minutes and 15 seconds, pretty much. What was it about that penalty kill that you guys were able to get in shooting lanes, block everything? You guys had, I guess, the fortunate bounces off the crossbar, but you guys were able to come out, get some big blocks, and come up with the eventual Yeah, the penalty kill was huge, kind of turned the game. They were coming, coming at us hard, but then after the penalty kill, we started going back to the game plan and just started working again. When you see your captain, Keegan Jones, get nailed into the end boards at the end there, but he gets right back up, there's a penalty on the play. What was it about him not retaliating and maybe that you guys see it on the bench or out on the ice and uh, knowing that you guys don't need to retaliate in a game like that with late in the game? Yeah, it just shows what we're all about. We'll take, we'll take them getting a penalty. We'll take a power play. We'll capitalize. That was um, defenseman Carter Stevenson speaking with Giants TV following the, the victory over Okanagan. So, again, it sounded like I wasn't there because that game happened in Kelowna and um, I didn't make the trip out there. But it sounded like, obviously, um, the Rockets had a chance to really um, tie the score late in the game with a huge 5 on 3 man advantage. But the, um, the Giants were able to uh, shut them down and uh, not give them anything in that 5 on 3 power play chance. 
and uh, eventually uh, the Giants hung on to win the game and to complete the sweep. Uh, another interview that they did was uh, with uh, with Fort Austin McKay, and uh, here is uh, what he had to say following that victory. Fort Austin McKay, after a huge weekend here in the Okanagan, Austin, it was your first games back. Uh, how did you feel, I guess, coming off an injury? Uh, you know, it was good. Uh, obviously, I was out for a little longer than I thought. Kind of dumb injury, but I was excited to get back, and, you know, great energy with the room. I mean, the guys accepted me right away, so it was, it was easy to come back. Yeah, it was awesome. Is it, is it a little more exciting for you to come back into a game and a weekend where you know you're playing the team that eliminated you guys last year? Yeah, for sure. I mean, over the summer, just training hard and everything, it all really led, led up to this weekend. And during the week prepared, you know, I mean, the whole team did the same thing, you know, get the water, the hydration, all that. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, I mean, this was the one weekend to come back for, so it was really exciting. Yeah, I loved it. Talk, talk about this game in general. It was you guys a little scrambling in the start to first. Both teams were, and then you guys got a huge goal from Wilson, and you guys could never looked back after that. And uh, just talk about this game in general and how you guys were able to not look back. Yeah, yeah, I was for for sure. It was uh, it was more scrambling. I, mean, I think yesterday it was more structured. We felt like we had the game more in our hands. I think the fact that we won yesterday kind of made them, you know, come out harder. So. Yeah, to counter that, I mean, uh, yeah, we we just tried our best, you know, get our, all four lines firing, but with injuries and stuff, uh, guys like Wilson, yeah, exactly stepped up. Cal had a nice big goal there at the end, so, yeah, we just, uh, we need all four lines going for the next games, and I think that happened this weekend, it was good. You guys faced a lot of adversity in that third period, a huge, huge penalty kill, five on three to, to even mention. Uh, <laughs> What was it about you guys, the penalty killers, and uh, the motivation on the bench once you guys knew it was killed? Yeah, I mean, uh, I was in the box, so I didn't really know how it was on the bench. But last year, I was a big part of the penalty kill, so I'm, I'm sure. I mean, those guys just love that, so they did a great job. I mean, I was literally praying in the box just for them to, to kill it off, and it was a great job. Kudos to them. Uh, Cal's not known for his goal scoring, but he gets a pretty good shot away, and. Uh, you guys know Cole Demers, and uh, you've seen him play, and uh, you look at that goal, it's something he would like to have back, but just talk about Cal and uh, getting that huge goal late in that game because you guys were on your heels just a little bit there. Yeah, Cal, I mean, he, he did what he had to do to get the job done. Uh, I think that was that was payback. I mean, he had a few nice rushes during the game one and game two today. Again, he uh, he's great with the puck, and uh, he's got a hard shot. I mean, I don't think our goalies could have even stopped that. That was a great shot by him. So in the audio there with uh, Austin McKay, he was talking about um, uh, the fact that uh, Callahan Brabner scored a goal late in the game to uh, ice the victory for the Giants. Uh, I guess apparently Callahan, uh, not <laughs> known as a goal scorer, but uh, again, full marks to the Giants for completing the um, sweep uh, against the Okanagan Rockets. And uh, with that victory, they improved to 6-0. and uh, on the season, and actually, uh, the Giants again won last weekend, or they swept last weekend's games as well. So through four weeks, the Giants have a record of eight zero and zero. So perfect eight wins in eight games. Uh, they beat the Fraser Valley Thunderbirds five to four and three to one last weekend. Um, so again, eight wins, no losses, no ties for the Vancouver Northwest Giants as they look again to finish atop the league standings this season. Uh, this is KP Wee, and you're listening to This Week in BC Marlick Sports here on CJSF 90.1 FM. Now, moving on to some other teams in the league. Now, South Island had the misfortune of playing some very strong teams to begin the season, and as mentioned, the Royals lost twice to the Giants in week number two. They also managed to split a pair of games against the Greater Vancouver Canadians in Richmond back on opening weekend on the 20th and 21st of September. Um, their opening game was a 6-4 loss to Greater Vancouver, and uh, their head coach, Jeff Grimwood, was gracious enough to chat with me following that defeat. You know what, I thought that we uh, we generated a lot of offense, I thought their goalie played well, and I thought we were just really sloppy in our own zone, and that's, uh, that was the difference. Now, Coach Grimwood, um, the, uh, again, this is a 6-4 loss for the uh, South Line Royals to the Greater Vancouver Canadians. Um, you guys had a lot of chances uh, today to kind of pull off, pull this one off, but they got a lot of uh, you know good balances. What can you guys do to uh, get the two points tomorrow to, to earn a split in the series? Well, we got to tidy up our own zone. Like we were just, we turned over a lot of pucks. We were we were um, really 
sloppy. And I think that's the main thing. I thought we had chances to score. Like I said, their goalie played great. Uh, credit to them. They worked hard, and every time we uh, we scored, they answered the bell. So you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, we just got to be better and um, you know a little more intense. And uh, coach, remember, what, uh, you guys are back next week at the same venue uh, for the showcase weekend. Uh, so you guys won't be playing at home until the third week of the season. So how big is it to um, you know? Get the two points tomorrow. Yeah, it's you know our playoff race starts today. Like there's mm -hmm. no doubt about it, and mm -hmm. and uh, we're really disappointed that coming out here with nothing. Um, you know our schedule doesn't get easier, it gets tougher. So obviously tomorrow's a game that uh, if we can bounce back, it'd be important for us. Some audio issue there. Apologize for that. Um, but that was uh, again South Island Royals head coach Jeff Grimwood uh, speaking with me. Uh, following their first game of the season. Uh, the good news for South Island was that they bounced back the following day to um, to beat Greater Vancouver 7-4 uh, to earn a split in that, uh, in that series. Now, it's still early in the season. Uh, we're four weeks in, and the Greater Vancouver Canadians have been one of the top teams in the league. I spoke with their head coach, Phil Alouf, about their season at the start uh, of the campaign. We're with Greater Vancouver Canadians head coach Phil Elouf. Um Coach, th thanks for joining us today. Um, first day of the season, what are your thoughts? Uh, good thoughts. Got a great squad. Uh, everybody's all excited to get going, and uh, it's in our own barn at the Oval, so we're, we're excited. Now, uh, how was your off season, if, if you had one? Uh, yeah, this year wasn't a lot. Uh, we had a lot of uh, spring stuff going on. Uh, ran into summer with skills, and so uh, we've been. Uh, it's, it's it's a very long season that's about to start. So, and uh, you guys had a, obviously like a good season last year. Now, how many players are returning from last year to this season squad? Uh, we've got uh, six six returners right now. Uh, that uh, again, very excited. We've got uh, obviously Shugru, uh our goaltender. Right. We have uh, Wilkinson, uh, Kyle Yu, uh, Owen Seidel, uh, Gary Dollywall, and uh, that's it. All right, and uh, who is uh, the captain this year? What can you tell us about it? Well, we haven't announced it yet, but if you're not going to run this video until a couple of days, I guess I can let the, uh, the cat out. It's going to be uh, Ryan Wilkinson, uh, our, uh, our, one of our vets. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's a... Uh, very good in the dress room, uh, good off ice, uh, good on ice, and so he'll uh, he'll lead this team well. All right, uh, I promise I won't uh, put, publish this video until maybe next week. Uh, so thanks so much, Coach, for your time, and good luck Thank against you. the South Island Royals, and uh, good luck the this season. Perfect. Thank you. As Coach Alouf uh, alluded to in the in the um, clip there. Um, even though the season just started uh, in September, they actually uh, were very busy during the summer getting ready you know, with uh, summer camp, uh, getting the players in shape and uh, doing all kinds of uh, things behind the scenes. So, uh, e again, even though uh, the season ended in March, um, at the beginning of March, and they had like a few months off uh, before September, uh, when the game started uh, during those quote unquote summer months, uh, they're actually busy doing a lot of uh, things behind the scenes to get ready for the upcoming season. So uh, thanks again to Coach Alalu for uh, his insight into into that. Uh, meanwhile, the Vancouver Northeast Chiefs have struggled through the first few weeks, and uh, they're a team that plays in the um, Planet Ice rank at in Coquitlam. Uh, so definitely, uh, if you have a chance to be out that way, you can uh, check them out. But uh, the Chiefs have struggled uh, through the first few weeks, uh, recording just one victory in the first six games. Uh, here's a player profile of Chiefs winger Caleb Fantil from the Vancouver Northeast Chiefs media. All right, we're here with Caleb Fantillo. He's a winger. He was just named uh, an alternate captain here for the Northeast Vancouver Chiefs. Uh, throughout the season, we're going to be talking with some players, getting to know them a little bit off the ice. So why not start here with some of the captains? Caleb, we've got some eight questions for you and then a bonus trivia question. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, what's your favorite subject in school? Oh, uh, probably PE. That would be the easiest one for me. Favorite game to play in PE? PE? Uh, probably dodgeball. That's a solid choice. If you won a million dollars, what's the first thing you'd buy? My parents' a car. Oh, how nice. All right, favorite TV show? Uh, Big Bang Theory. Can't say I respect that. <laughs> Website you frequent the most? Oh, uh, probably Twitter. Yeah, Twitter's the most. Favorite food? 
Oh, lasagna. Yeah, my mom's lasagna for sure. What is your dream vacation destination? Uh, Bora Bora. Biggest pet peeve? Oh. Uh, no idea. We'll come back to it after okay. the trivia question. Okay. What is the only letter that does not appear on the periodic table? <laughs> I have no idea. You got a 1 in 26 <laughs> shot. Uh, all right. Uh, Z? No, Z's on there, I think. Uh, X. Incorrect. J is what okay. we were looking for. J. O for 2 so far. <laughs> the players have not known that. All right, we're going back to Pet Peeve. All right. Uh, when someone ring, uh, puts their fingernails down a chalkboard. All right. That'll wrap it up. Thanks a lot, Caleb. Fentil actually had a big night with two goals on, on Saturday, October 11th, as uh, the Chiefs knocked off the Kootenai Ice by a score of 7-3 for their second win of the season. And Zan Kareem also notched a pair of goals for Vancouver Northeast that night. And uh, I caught up with both of those players uh, to get their take uh, on uh, uh, what happened that game. Big 7-3 win tonight against the Kootenai Ice. Um, thoughts about the game tonight? Uh, boys played good. Um Solid victory tonight. Uh, we could do a little bit better, so that's what we're going to try to do tomorrow to, to beat them even bigger tomorrow. Now, uh, how in, how big was the power play for you guys uh, this evening? Uh, it was good. It was, fi- it was finally uh, nice to see the power play clicking in the way it did with five power play goals. Uh, it's nice for that to be clicking right now, to, uh, going into harder teams throughout the season. So, yeah, it's a good thing for the boys. Now, Caleb, a uh, big game for you as well. A couple of goals. Uh, what, are you, what are the thoughts about your own play? Uh, I thought I didn't, I didn't play that well. I, I can do better. There's always room to improve in, in every single game. Uh, but yeah, just come out with it tomorrow in our, in our game tomorrow against them and just be even better than I was today. Now, the, finally, just a couple questions about yourself, Caleb. Uh, what do you do to uh, stay in shape during the season in terms of training and stuff like that? Uh, I go, I have a personal trainer still that I go to uh, three times a week and I uh, just stay in shape and uh, keep my muscle that I gain through the offseason. But yeah, that's, that's the majority of what I do and uh, we have dry line with the team and it's just go and go. And last question, Caleb, but who's your favorite NHL player and why? Well, uh, probably Joffrey Lupo. Lu- 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 uh, I model my game around him the most. That's the last part of All right, thanks so much, uh, Caleb. And once again, congratulations on the big 7 3 victory tonight. We're with Zian Kareem of the Vancouver Northeast Chiefs. A big 7 3 win today against the Kootenai Ice. Uh, thoughts about the game? Uh, you know, I thought we worked hard out there. Uh, five on five didn't really go our way, but we were solid in the power play, and we took the win. And uh, definitely, the power play was a big uh, part of the game, um, and your performance as well in the, in the uh, first period. Uh, thoughts about your old performance tonight? Uh, I thought I played pretty good. Um, I got two goals in the first period, so that's good for me. Uh, I think I just kind of slowed down in the second and third, but that can pick up tomorrow. And uh, now, how, how big is this victory t- tonight here against uh, Kootenai? Uh, well, we were kind of lacking in our first six games of the season, so it was a big win for us. we got to get the two points tomorrow, too, though. Uh, definitely. And uh, again, uh, congratulations on a big victory tonight and also a big performance. Uh, good luck tomorrow, and hopefully you guys will complete the sweep. Thank you very much. So that's uh, that's actually all the action from the first four weeks of play in the BC Major Midget League. Uh, for the latest standings and information, please go to their website at bcmml.net. That's bcmml. Net. And actually, that's all the time we have uh, for today's show. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. My name is KP Wee, and you've been, you've been listening to This Week in BC Marlick Sports here on CJSF 90.1 FM, and we'll talk to you again next time.